Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Bible in the News. We have seen once again more Palestinian funding being slashed. Is this the beginning of the end for the Palestinian Authority? What might the Bible have to say? Where might the Palestinians and this conflict fit into Bible prophecies? What can we expect? The prophecies seem to require a change from what we see now and for what the nations have been pushing for for, for decades now. The old two-state paradigm just doesn't fit what the prophecies have been calling for, which is probably why we've never seen it succeed. There are numerous prophecies that require strong Jewish presence in Judea and Samaria, and for them to be in peace there. This is the area that Israel returned to in 1967. And it's important also to notice that not only are they there, not only are they in peace there, but there's nations that gather together against them there and seem to be displeased with this fact. There are enemies that say the land is theirs in Ezekiel chapter 36. It says, starting verse 1, And thou, also thou, son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Because the enemy hath said against you, Ah, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Because they have made you desolate, and swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. Ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are an infamy of the people. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys, and to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. So from these first four verses, then, we see that God sees how they are despised by the nations. He sees how his people are spoken against, and he focuses on these mountains. There are many prophecies that focus on these mountains, and this is one of them. This is an area of God's land that the nations have taken as a prey, that they've appointed to their own possession, and it's this residue of the heathen. But it goes on. Verse, for, verse 5, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen, and against all Idumea, which have appointed my land into their possession, with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds, to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy, and in, the, in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches, and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. So God brings shame upon these heathen, but he causes Israel to prosper. This situation, the things that these people are doing, stirs God into action. It's also important to notice that it's the old wastes that they inhabit. It's not just new settlements. It's not just new places to live. It's not new towns so much, but it's particularly the old wastes that God is pointing us to. For behold, I am for you. This is going on in Ezekiel 36, verse 9. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown, and I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. And the city shall be inhabited, and the waste shall be builded, and I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit, and I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. So there's a more peaceful situation that has to develop. Thus saith the Lord God, because they say unto you, Thou land devourest up men, and hast bereaved thy nations. So there's been a situation there that has caused death and trouble. Therefore, Thou shalt devour men no more. So this is to change. Neither bereave thy nations any more, saith the Lord God. Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen any more. Neither shalt thou bear the reproach of the people any more. Neither shalt thou cause thy nations to fall any more, saith the Lord God. So it's talking then about ancient areas, ancient settlements, 
inhabit the old wastes, it says. So if we look at where many of these important old wastes are that have key, key places in the Old Testament, places that prophets are from, places where things happened, many of them are in that central mountain area that Israel captured in 1967 as they were defending themselves from the Jordanian aggression. So they are to inhabit these old wastes, and that requires them to live in those areas as would be called Judea and Samaria, also known as the West Bank. So these are the areas specified in the prophecy as the mountains of Israel, particularly. There's mountains in Israel elsewhere, but that's the, that central mountain range where much of Bible history took place. So the removal of Jews and creation of an Arab state here does not fit the prophecies. When we talk about defunding the Palestinian Authority, what is the Palestinian Authority? A couple of points to take notice of. They're established in 1994 as a precursor for a Palestinian government, and they were kind of an umbrella association that had a number of um, terrorist groups that were under them that kind of presented as political parties. They have a police force to keep peace in the PA-controlled areas, and all parties and factions have a history of terrorism. The PA rewards attacks with pensions and rewards for terrorists and their families with payouts. The Palestinians have refused all offers of land for peace from Israel, including Ehud Olmert's very generous offer of almost everything the PA demanded, and the PA demands all of the land that Israel gained in 1967, and they demand the return of the refugees. And you might think, oh, the refugees would return to the Palestinian state. No, the, the refugees they would then have to return to Israel. And they call it return, but really many of these people have never set foot in the place because it's really a grandfather or even a great-grandfather that actually lived west of the Jordan River. So then things started to change. With the rise of Donald Trump on the scene, we saw small things at first, small changes in emphasis, but we saw things begin to change. As early as the Republican platform that was set in 2016, they changed the references to the two-state solution to references to peace in a more general way. And um, anyway, I'll, I'll just read you this quote. It's, it's important to realize. The United States seeks to assist in the establishment of a comprehensive and lasting peace in the Middle East to be negotiated among those living in the region. So it doesn't single out the Palestinian Authority or anything like that, but it's just those living in the region. And then it says, we oppose any measures intended to impose, a, oppose, impose an agreement or to dictate borders or other terms, and we call for the immediate termination of all U.S. funding of any entity that attempts to do so. Our party is proud to stand with Israel now and always. So that's very pro-Israel and um, extremely supportive of Israel's positions. More recently, we started to see threats of aid cuts. This article is from Tuesday, the 2nd of January, 2018. Donald Trump, a couple of tweets as he does. Um, he says, we pay the Palestinians hundreds of millions of dollars a year and get no appreciation or respect. And he goes on, but with the Palestinians no longer willing to talk peace, why should we make any of these massive future payments to them? So he starts saying, why are we paying them all this money? They don't even give us respect, never mind anything else. So then we started seeing U.S. aid to the Palestinians frozen. A couple of quotes, the United States administration froze $125 million grant to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency. That is the UN's agency for Palestinian refugees. All other refugees have a different agency. But there's one specifically for the Palestinian refugees, and there's reasons for that that we won't get into, largely to do with how the descendants are also termed refugees, even though anywhere else in the world that isn't the case. The United States has quietly frozen its aid to the Palestinian Authority pending review. So the aid directly to the Palestinian Authority was frozen also, and they're even freezing money to U.S. aid, which is their own agency for projects in the West Bank. And then we see others following. We see Israel itself enacts a law to freeze Palestinian funds equal to prisoners' stipends. So the money that's given to terrorists is taken off the tax money and so on that would be given to the PA. Belgian 
Jews laud government's aid freeze to PA over school named for terrorists. So the, the Palestinians named one of their schools after a notable terrorist, and the Belgian government had been funding some of that, and they cut their funding because of that name. Australia ends direct aid to the Palestinian Authority also. And then freezes turn to cuts. So permanent cuts as opposed to just potentially temporary freezes. U.S. cuts aid to Palestinians by more than 200 million. And then they start targeting the refugee situation. Um, there's a report that comes out that says U.S. report finds only 20,000 Palestinian refugees in the world. So because many of these um, refugees fled in 1948, the number of those that are still alive is actually very small. It's only when you start counting descendants that that number really grows. But that's not how refugees are counted anywhere else. So then, according to reports, the U.S., is set to announce that it rejects the Palestinian right of return. So that's Palestinians um, saying that they have the, the right to live in Israel. And then there's also Palestinian internal conflict brewing. Should Mahmoud Abbas have to step down, if there's some reason that he needs a replacement, there is a big power struggle on the brew. Um, this article, quote, senior Fatah officials reportedly accumulating weapons, recruiting armed men to their side to prepare for eventual post-Abbas struggle. So they're not uh, finding ways to garner votes, they're not um, going about it in a civil manner, but they're preparing for the eventuality of a uh, shoot-up over who is going to take the spot. So the PA is being pushed into a corner by Donald Trump and by other events. Um, the former ambassador to the U.S., that's the Israeli ambassador to the U.S., Danny Ayalon, assesses that when Trump spoke of the price Israel will have to pay, this is after the recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and the, and the moving of the U.S. embassy there, Trump spoke of a price that Israel would have to pay for that. He says the price that Trump is speaking of is really to be able to paint Abbas as a refuser of peace. That would be harder after what has happened. Another interesting prophecy when we're considering this is Joel chapter 3 and verse 4. I'm just going to read it to you in the NIV. I'm not usually a big fan of the NIV, but it does do quite a reasonable job here. So Joel chapter 3 verse 4, Now what have you against me, Tyre and Sidon, and all you regions of Philistia? Are you repaying me for something I have done? Are you paying me back? If you are paying me back, I will swiftly and speedily return on your own heads what you have done. So the Schemes and the things that these enemies of Israel are doing turn on their own heads. Also, it's important to remember that in Ezekiel chapter 38, as we often refer to that chapter because it lays out quite um, vividly, it paints quite a, a picture of um, which nations are where and doing what uh, when God gathers the nations to battle to Armageddon. So Ezekiel 38 Verse 11, And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. So they're at rest, they're dwelling safely, they have no walls, no bars, nor gates. So we've got some changes to see there. And they're coming to take a spoil and to take a prey. So there's obviously some wealth going on. And um, these are desolate places that are now inhabited. So they're areas that had been vacated in history, but they are now inhabited. They've been rebuilt. And there are people that are gathered out of the nations. So they're the Jews that have returned from all over the world, as we have seen in our day. And um, they've gotten cattle and goods there, and they're dwelling in the midst of the land. That word midst of the land, as we've mentioned before, the midst is the navel of the land. It only comes up in one other place, and it's referring to the area by Shechem, which is um, central in the central Samaria, I guess you would say. So, what happens then? They all gather themselves together, and the hostile nations meet their end. It shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come up against the land of Israel. So, these nations come, headed by Gog. Thus saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face, for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. 
and the mountain shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother, and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. They will rain upon him and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord, that I am Yahweh. That's Ezekiel 38, verses 18 to 23. So what we've seen and what we've said then is that the two-state solution that everybody's talking about doesn't fit the prophecies. We need to see something else instead. And what we see instead is that instead of Palestinians inhabiting those areas, we see Jews inhabiting them. That's not to say that there can't be Palestinians left in the land. I don't think there's anywhere that requires that. But what is required is that the Jews are there. And not just that they're there, but they're there in peace and in safety, and they're doing well and prospering, so much so that they become um, something to be desired to be taken by the nations as a prey. And the land, of course, is something they come to take of as a prey, but also it's got the cattle and the goods and the wealth. So what we're seeing now then, as we see the PA being marginalized and pressured, we see that all those things that the PA has stood for and the war that they're trying to fight against Israel, we need that to go away. We can't have that the kind of peace that's talked about here with that kind of entity. They either have to drastically change or be removed out of the, off the scene in some way because we see them there in peace and safety without walls, bars, and gates. We can't have a terrorist funding, terrorist encouraging, militant society in the middle of the land of Israel, and Israel be totally carefree without walls, bars, and gates, and this, this incredible peace that really I can only describe as being something like where I live in Canada, where the people just aren't concerned for any of these things. It seems like Israel has got to that kind of situation. But the nations in general aren't happy with what has happened. Europe and the nations that are listed in Ezekiel 38 actually do come against them. So it is an apparent peace in that sense. But as far as the situation today, we don't even have that apparent peace. So we need to see some things change. And we are seeing things move in that direction, which is exciting as we watch events. We see God's hand at work in the world. And we see him working to establish his kingdom in Israel that Israel will become a praise in the earth, and his name will go forth from Zion. Thank you for coming and listening to this week's Bible in the News. We'll see you again next week, God willing.